do 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 hello body slams and drop kicks uh, i am your podcaster of the year uh, i like the sound of that podcaster of the year finally a place where my accomplishments can be recognized rewarded and all things wonderful and we're going to have a fantastic year hello martha hello jessica Hello, Jennifer. Oh my God, Hunter, have you seen Mikey? He is like super cute and I want to do his hair before the podcast. I'll be sure to point him in your direction. Uh, do, 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 I'm the best, uh, not Vince, uh, here I am. Uh, hey, Dean. Hey, matey, how you doing? Happy New Year, fella. Happy New Year. <laughs> So, you won Podcaster of the Year last week. I did Congratulations. Win Podcaster was, of the Year. As Thank far you. as I am concerned, it was thoroughly earned. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dean. Really, it, it, it's an honor to come in here each and every week, uh, spend some time with you, spend some time with Fraser. Not a big fan of the other guy, but you know what? I put yeah. up with what I have to put up with, and it feels so good to be able to get things off my chest. Uh, you know, a place does, yeah. where Vincent Kennedy McMahon can be overruled by people smarter than him. I oh, truly feel as though this is the greatest thing in the world because you see, for once in the McMahon family, when it comes to body slams and drop kicks, uh, when it comes to the impact plus app plugging, uh, who's the best? I'm the best. I'm the greatest in the world. Vince McMahon is nothing on me. Vince McMahon is gone from here. He's not even here. He is the world's worst podcaster in the history of the world. I am the greatest. Me, Triple H, the king of kings, the cerebral assassin. Uh, <laughs> yes, um... sir. And- Hunter, you're not laughing good. I'm. I wish I could, uh, but unfortunately, I can't. Um, you see, last week we did the producers quiz, which we absolutely loved. Don't get me wrong, we absolutely loved it. Um, unfortunately, she was asked the question: um, if you could fire anybody from Final Cut and from Final Cut and Body Sands and Job Kicks, who would it be? I can't remember who the third, the other one was, but there was your. In fact, there was Vince's name mentioned. Did she there, fire him? There was, I think it was your name was mentioned, and there was Dr. J that was mentioned. You're, 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 you're keeping me in suspense for no reason. Did she fire him? Is this going to be Christmas morning all over again? Um, no, I'm going to be the Scrooge, unfortunately, and say she did not fire him. She had the opportunity to fire Vince McMahon. Yeah. And she didn't take the opportunity and to she fire didn't. Vince McMahon. He, she fired Dr. J. And believe me, it took a significant pay rise and a lot and a, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears, namely blood, to make, keep him getting to stay. But don't worry, because there is one thing you can count on in this world is that I will fire Vincent Kennedy McMahon. Well, I, I I thank you for that, Dean. Uh, I really do. Uh, but why, Dean? Why does the producer go against her own talent? Uh, everybody wants Vince McMahon gone. I want yeah. Vince McMahon gone. But I no, him gone. The, the producer, the producer in all of her glory, she's never run a podcast before. She doesn't know the horrors, the pain of having mm-hmm. Vince and Kenny McMahon on. How could she do this to her talent? Uh, how, um, how, how could she be such a hack? Uh, what a hack job, uh, that loser. I'll have you know I should have her head for this. Uh. <laughs> oh, don't worry. Uh, I have an inevitable revenge, which will be coming. But um, I revenge, actually have uh, a feeling I, I have a feeling I know why she's done it. Oh, my it's God. because she loves Michael Fraser too much. It's true. Yes. Oh, I my see, God, I, it's true. It is true. I actually have a theory that my lady's uh, head is so far up Fraser's ass that when she has a can of Lucasade, he instantly feels refreshed. Oh, my God. That explains way too much. It does, doesn't it? It also explains why Vince McMahon probably isn't here. He's probably on his way to British Columbia to get Michael Fraser flowers and whisper yep. seat nothings in his ear and say, how was your day, dear? And all those other wonderful things. Uh, 
but anyway, thank you, Dean, for having my back. Uh, you'll uh, have to excuse I'm, me if I get a little emotional on this podcast. Oh, you get all emotional you want, but just remember, I have your back. I don't have Vince's back. <laughs> Th- thank you. You you want to know what else would have my back right now? Uh, the Impact Plus app, the greatest app in all of professional wrestling. Uh, watch the blood, sweat, and tears of some of the greatest WWE superstars before, during, and after they became WWE superstars. On top of that, look at all of the roster that Impact has now. Uh, watch them rise to the top to crush Vince McMahon and his stupid tyrannical reign for one low, low price. Only on the Impact Plus app. Uh, And this is Body Slams uh, and Drop Kicks. We've uh, already heard from my number one co host, uh, the man whose opinion is as cold and black as his soul, uh, Mr. Dean Connolly. But what we haven't heard about is uh, from our other co host, the lead co host, the person who Vince McMahon calls Sweetie Boo. Honey Badger, Honey Suckle, and Fraser My one King, and only. Uh, my one and only Fraser. His one and only, yeah. Uh, I feel like a restraining order is bursting out of my soul. I you do realize that even if you did that, Mr. Uh, Vince McMahon would just happily have it ripped off free of charge. It's true, uh... Vince McMahon would probably go so far as to actually have you divorced, even though you didn't ask for it. Probably. <laughs> you know, and Jesse would willingly take the settlement. Uh... Oh, I bet she would. Yeah, don't forget she'd take the kids as well. So you can have you can have a ninety you can have an eighty year old baby, but then again you would love the, you would lose the love of your life and the other loves of your life. Yeah. <clears throat> Unfortunately. Seems pretty cool, Fraser. Uh, it's not. Um, anyway, Fraser, this is why is Hunter doing your job? Just because he's podcaster of the year doesn't mean you have to hand duties over to him. He insisted. He sent me a memo and everything. He hounded me every hour, every day. I'm drinking a hot chocolate. There he is. I'm dropping a deuce. So there he is. You know, I'm taking the dog out. There he is with the poop bag. Like he counted me. Like every I will hour, have every you day. know that your little snowball loved when Hunter picked up her poop. Uh... So I had to hand it over to him. He insisted. He pleaded. He grabbed onto my leg. He kept throwing Shawn Michaels DVDs at me. Hey, those things are the most beautiful things in the world, Fraser. That's all I'm saying, guy. Uh... But anyway, didn't you guys have a pay per view last night? Uh, that oh, you, you mean the pay per view that was for? tarnished by Roman Reigns not appearing for the inevitable reason? Did did you did what if, when you say tarnished, uh, I say improved? Uh, yeah, true. Hold on a minute, don't we have news before that? Well, I mean, yeah, but Michael Fraser will take initiative and say, "Okay, guys, now here's the news." Uh, Oh, he was going to use the news. I was going to actually say, now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, D Generation X proudly brings to you the news. If you're not done with that, we got two words for you the news. (laughs) WWE reportedly changed plans for Biggie due to Roman Reigns testing positive for COVID 19. At WWE on Fox Twitter account published a graphic of the result from the day one premium live event. However, it was quickly deleted after fans pointed out that Big E was listed as the winner of the WWE title match. The graphic had a picture of Brock Lesnar, but with the catch in Big E defeated last year, Rollins and Owens, and no mention Lesnar. Lesnar was added to the WWE title match at the last minute due to Roman Reigns testing positive for COVID. Brian Alvarez of F4WOnline.com commented on the matter. Going into the show, Big E was coming out the champion, and so Big E losing the title was the direct assault of Roman Reigns getting COVID and having to scramble to come up with a new idea, quote, courtesy of WrestlingNews.co. And then on the Wrestling News Source, uh, com WN Source Twitter account, look closely at the scrap produced by WM Fox. It looks like Big E was originally due to retain last night at WB Day 1. And then uh, Chuckster01995 tweeted out, 
Take that L. Biggie did not win. Well, you, here's the thing. Oh, nobody would have expected Brock Lesnar to win there. And, uh, you know, expect the unexpected. That's the message that you can send with something like this. Unfortunately, Vincent Kenny McMahon is not smart enough uh, and actually enough. needs people to, you know, do what I am worried about. Uh, and just hear me out on this. I'm watching at home, just like each and every one of you nerds. Uh, we got Brock Lesnar as the WWE Universal Champion, at least I believe, and we've got Roman Reigns as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion. It's the other way around. Whatever. All I'm saying is, is Brock really going to lose his championship? No, and we're going to run into the same issue that we had before. Yeah, but the problem is, Raw has enough has enough baby faces that they could technically have somebody take it off. But the problem is SmackDown only has Drew McIntyre as a viable opponent. Everybody else on SmackDown is, well, with all due respect, shit. Name me uh, one person on SmackDown other than Drew McIntyre who could take that universal title. According to Vince McMahon, Michael Fraser. Oh, Fraser could. Apparently, Vince McMahon would insist that Fraser win the when when the WWE title off the big show, which we know will never happen. Oh yeah, yeah. More backstage details regarding the WWE title match changed to day one. It's previously noted, it's believed that there were plans for Biggie to retain the title at day one premium live event prior to Reigns testing positive. According to Fightful.com, talent were told that Lesnar would be added to the WWE title match in the mid afternoon, January first. Including the entrances, the original Fatal Ford match was forced scheduled to last around 30 minutes. The match with Lesnar ended up lasting under nine minutes. See care of ringsidenews.com noted the following. Brock Lesnar winning the W title at W Day 1 was a big change of plans, but we were told that it won't affect WrestleMania. W is still going forward with the re- WrestleMania direction. The writing team was told this change will only enhance the Roman Heyman Brock story. Two titles, one Roman Reigns. How do we make him look even stronger? Have a unification match where Roman wins and Brock loses. I don't fucking want that. No offense, but Brock, both of them have tarnished that universal title beyond repair. No offense, but how long's Roman Reigns been champion for now? Is it 16 months, 17 months, 18 months? Who I cares? Uh... Who cares? Just get that title off him at WrestleMania. I don't give a shit who it is. Hell, even bring Scotty Too Hotty back and have him win the title. I don't fucking care. Get that title off him. They won't do it unless The Rock shows up. Their entire storyline with Reigns hinges on The Rock. Well, then you can kiss goodbye to a decent viewership because, no offense, Reigns, you know this better than anyone. Long title reigns mean complete and utter boredom. Especially the stories around it suck. Roman Reigns hasn't done anything really good since that time he was like sobbing with what he did the J. And then they kind of dropped the ball of everybody. How long ago was that? That was like months ago. Exactly. It's time for, time for a fresh injection of blood. Get our title off him at WrestleMania. I don't give a shit if it's back. Dwayne won't show up. He's got too much on. He won't do it. The title needs to be gone by WrestleMania, if not WrestleMania night. Otherwise, the Universal title has officially lost all credibility. Not that it hasn't got any credibility left anyway. At least the WWE title has some dignity left in it. I mean, everyone has been begging for Big E to be champion. He was champion. Lashley's been champion. Um, I'm going to... I'm going to not even bother with him. This is too big rain because that was pathetic. McIntyre was a champion because he did, he should have been. So basically, please get the title off, uh, off uh, Roman and definitely make, get it off. Um, in fact, let's have Lashley v. Lesnar at WrestleMania just to get the title off him. It would make sense when you think about it to have Lashley beat Lesnar at WrestleMania. Uh. There you go. Even the, uh, if you're King looking to build a legitimate monster, 
And besides, everyone has been wanting a Lesnar v uh, a Lesnar v Lashley for years. Even Lashley wants it. I seem to remember him saying that he actually wants to face Le- uh, Lesnar. Why not do it now while they're both so high up the card and while Lashley's actually in the company? The Usos yeah. address from... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I just said indeed... Uh... The Usos addressed Roman Reigns testing for COVID. While speaking with SI.com, the Usos commented on their cousin Roman Reigns. Jay, it fell off not having the tribal chief around. This match was for him. We represented and he's going to be okay. He's home resting and maybe playing some Call of Duty. We're going to see him back soon. Jimmy, we opened the show and we're so used to seeing the big ooze close the show. This epidemic is crazy and all we want is for him to be safe and take care of himself. You At the end of the day, that's what that's all you really want to. Don't get me wrong. I do I do want him to be alright, but at the same time, I want a bit of variety in my in the products I watch or I try and watch. No offense, but I got I got um I got shivers the minute I saw Beth Phoenix was back. Now, why can't we have something like that with Roman? Didn't they, weren't they going to introduce Naomi as a member of the bloodline? That was a rumor circling around for a while. Yeah, please, just please. No offense, but it's not a proper bloodline unless Naomi's there. Because bearing in mind, she is married. Is it Jimmy she's married to? Yeah. So, why, so it can't be a proper bloodline if uh, Naomi's not part of it. So it's not, like I said, it's not a proper bloodline if she's not part of it. Otherwise... It's just pointless because you can't have a bloodline without all the members of a family. I mean, no offence, but even when Roman uh, did that stipulation for for Jay, he even mentioned Naomi in it. So why has she not been part of the bloodline? Why has she spent the majority of last year feuding with Sonya Deville? Because they're dropping the ball with the storyline. Oh, and that's why I'm so glad that I don't wait for it to in any any sort of uh, sort of high regard because I don't. What more, Fraser? You're not going to like this one. True McIntyre reportedly dealing with legitimate neck issues. As seen during the WWE Day One pay per view, True McIntyre was attacked at stage by Happy Corbin and Mad Cat Moss. In storyline terms, WWE wrote that McIntyre suffered a cervical neck strain with severe contusions. Upon further evaluation by medical staff, he will have a follow-up with an orthopedic cervical specialist. According to Mike Johnson of PWInsider.com, the angle was done because McIntyre is dealing with legitimate neck issues that need to be addressed. Johnson noted the following, There is no word how long McIntyre could be out of action, but the hope among those we spoke with is that it will end up being a short term and ring hiatus. Until McIntyre gets checked out, it's up in the air. According to one source, it was also pointed out that McIntyre has been dealing with the injury for the several weeks and worked through it at live events without holding back. Hmm. Well, if it's the next straight, it's an, correct me if I'm wrong, it's the next strain, right, Fraser? Yep. It you, depend, well, depending you on the actually... You yeah, can go work carry the next strain, you can... You can work through an X strain, just so long as you're very, very careful about it. Uh, yeah, and, and the other fact is, if he's having it checked out, at least he knows it's being addressed. It's like it's like Kenny Noballs is finally having his shoulder sorted out. That's why that's why AEW has been so lovely since the uh, since the day he lost to Hangman Page. Oh, it's been so much better. I know it's been so much fun, and not to it, mention, you uh, know, you know, it feels like a breath of fresh air. Uh, it does, feels yeah. like the reign of terror is finally over. I finally understand what you people were so happy about when Batista won the World Heavyweight Championship off of me. Uh, mm. Yeah, I'm oh, sorry, Fraser. I forgot what we were talking about. Oh yes, uh, Drew McIntyre. He'll be back. He'll be back in time for WrestleMania season. If it's not too bad. If it's not. I'd have him back for Summer Slam, depending on how serious it is. You, well, know when you, you... you know there is a problem, though, because if he does end up being on the shelf, then there is no legitimate face to challenge Roman Reigns. Well, he promise can't... they already dropped the ball with Reigns versus Roman, like the Reigns versus Drew a while back when he beat Drew McIntyre. They should have had an end of the time limit draw. 
mm. or double disqualification or whatever. But the fact is, when they've got their favourites, they just fuck everything else up. Is that all the news, Fraser? That is all we got, because most of the other one is just pay-per-view results, but I figure we're about to go over that anyway, so... Yes, we are. Um, I did actually tally these up. I think it was yesterday I did these. Let me just grab these up. And don't forget, we've got more predictions to do as well. We've got two lots of predictions this week. Uh, Let me just... Hold on a minute. Oh, God, not again. Had the right. first home free. What do you have to say about Drew McIntyre? Right, one minute, boys. I'm going to have to do this the old-fashioned way because this place, this uh, PC will not play ball with me. <sighs> you right. want to know who else won't play ball? The producers! Because he doesn't have any! <laughs> oh, come on. That was good and you know it, sir. Yep. My gentleman, hold on, let me just... Uh... Oh, you look like you're going to kill me. <laughs> look at your face, it's priceless. <laughs> right then, gentlemen, I have the results of day one here and the predictions. Um, now, this oh, is a oh, two-way oh. affair because Mr. Fraser... No, 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 no. Hold on a minute, he did, did do one. He, he did do. He did have his lots. We but do, unfortunately, we I... You know, you know. Um, before we go too too far in this, I just want to say, Fraser got his picks in. We're a little bit scared, so yeah, I mean, he's going to have to justify every pick to the audience. Uh, I am just getting. I've got three phones on me. I am just getting his picks with my other one. Uh, I've got to get out of that for a start. I've got to find our chat, mate. There we go. Now where were we? Right now. For, for the results of day one, we started off with Cesaro and Ricochet versus Rich Holland and Sheamus. Uh, me and Nathan correctly predicted Sheamus. Uh, Fraser, on the other hand, for some strange reason, decided to pick Kenny and Mikey from, from Team Spirit Squad. Hmm. Yeah, you know, the most unstoppable tag team, you know, they were moving so fast. It was like there was a whole group of people in that tag team, you know? Mm, Yo, Kenny likes so that leg drop, like... Mike Mundo, you know, was amazing in Ring of Honor, and you can see where he learned it all from. Right, we'll just leave the producers to see whether they're wor- it's worthy or not. Anyway, with um, the Edge versus the Miz, I will be honest, I t- did pick the Miz because I thought he was going to absolutely hammer Edge into the ground, but I'm so glad the Glamazon's back. I've missed her so much. So, never, no offence, but I'm happy to take a loss if it means that she's back. And don't worry, Nathan took a loss as well. Um, our dear co-host, on the other hand, decided to put Alex Riley. Yeah, a Rye, You know, the Mrs. Buddy. You know, the best FCW wrestler they ever had. You know, and Mr. NXT, the varsity bad boy. Like, how can you not back him? Um, just so you know, uh, final, uh, Body Sams and Drug Picks' opinion is not entirely Michael Fraser's. It's, we actually have our own. Right. The War Women's title match between Becky Lynch and Liv Morgan. Um, we both we both said Becky was going to win. Well, when I say we both, I meant me and Nathan. Because we knew it wasn't going to happen. And unfortunately, Michael Fraser has also put my New Year's resolution excuse me, is not to watch any women's wrestling matches my wife isn't in. So my glorious wife, Jessica Fraser-Smith. Yep, that sounds okay, about I'll, right. I'll buy and that I, one. It's Jessica, you know, my my greatest love. All right, then Drew McIntyre and Mad Cat Moss, which, to be fair, we actually, me and Nathan actually guessed right because we knew it was going to be bad. But for whatever reason, um, for, uh, Fraser decided to put Sheamus... Uh, did you yeah. forget they were? That's the wrong match. That Sheamus was actually on another match in the card. No, Sheamus pulling double duty. You know, he had to borrow them trunks from Drew McIntyre to ensure he got a win. You know, that oh, broke it went really off. But like, you know. Well, to be honest with you, Nathan, we're going to let our glorious B and D subscribers, listeners, everybody, we're going to let them judge whether he's actually allowed to do that or not. Either way, uh, the route. Uh, sorry, the uh, war tag team match between RK Bro and Street Profits. We both said RK Bro, which was correct. 
um, as usual, Fraser decided to put the other load of the Spirit Squad blocks on, uh, which was uh, Johnny and Mitch. So, so I'm not quite sure to be honest. I think I've, I think I'm secretly visited Arkham Asylum, where Fraser is the man who has actually the reason for my insanity. Oh come on, the Spirit Squad! How can you not? The best, the best team to ever reshape team wrestle. I'm going to hell for this. You are. So, so which, tell me, Fraser, what's your favorite move of the Spirit Squad? You picked him not once but twice, and Sean and I completely dismantled him on more than one occasion. Yeah, it's true. You know, I like that time they were in the ring, and then, you know, they got stuff dropped on them to celebrate. You know, it's a weird celebration, but, like... Well, that stuff was pretty green, I will say, and, you know, if you if you watch the Spirit Squad come back and, you know, their attires are primarily green... You know, I, then, I, could, I, 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 could, I could see it. I could see it. Now, if you were to put the Spirit Squad up as a team against Kenny Omega and uh, Hangman Page, oh, what yes, team, what team would you be backing? Oh, I have the bat, the Spirit Squad, because you know they're unstoppable. Like, like look at the way you guys sent them out when they needed some time off. You know, you pulled out that luxury box, you know, and you're. He even slapped on back to OVW, you know, like you knew how badly OVW needed them. Uh, you know, we, we really were charitable. Yeah. It's a shame about Kenny, though. It definitely is. Um, anyway, gentlemen, moving on, there's a few more title matches. The SmackDown tag team title match between the Usos and the New Day. Yes, Fraser, I put King Woods and Lord Kofi because I know how much of a Xavier Woods fan you are. But either way, the New Day lost and the Usos won. So I get two points. Nath, sorry, uh, Fraser, on the other hand, decided to put New Age Outlaws. Yeah, you know, they, they came in before and they were, you know, picking up the slack in the tag division. And, you know, they got called in because, you know, half the roster had issues and they came to save the tag team match. Is that before or after they did their catchphrase entrance, which I still love to this day? It was before, you know, they came in to save the day. You know, Hunter was there with pom poms, having the time of his life. I actually remember cheerleading for the New Age Outlaws. It was wonderful. Once yeah. Sean left the Generation X, I thought to myself, whose coattails could I ride to success? At? And then when you look at, oh, you didn't know? I thought to myself, oh my God, these guys are perfect. Right, the last one is a bit complicated because obviously, as Fraser has said, Roman Reigns is tested for positive. So those two matches went out the window into a into a fatal five way between Lesnar, Big E, Seth Rollins, Kevin Owens, and Bobby Lashley for the WWE title. Which, to be fair, we didn't know about. I mean, I was asleep when this happened, so I obviously didn't know about it. But in fairness, I wanted Big E to win, which I think Fraser has said was the original plan. So technically, if it hadn't been for Roman Reigns, I would have been even more ahead. And and uh, Nathan would have lost. Although, to be fair, we do have different views on that. But the fact of the matter is they're irrelevant because Lesnar won. Now, I'm going to read out Fraser's uh, one here. Actually, I'm going to read out both of He says, um, for the WWE Championship Fatal 4-Way match, the winner is Tyson Dukes only because I can't say Kenny Noble is Omega. Yep. Fraser, you know, I bet you have a man crush on him. You know, Tyson Dukes, you saw him, you know, he walked in, flannel and all, you know, hair pulled back and won the WWE title. Now, I'm not quite sure what you were thinking when you put this phrase, but I, I'm not going to say, I'm not even going to dispute it. When it when asked if it was Reigns or Lesnar, he said, look, it's day one of the new year. I'm hoping Lucian will need to poop on the potty. One thing leads to another and I miss this match. If I have to watch, I'll say Sami Zayn, he's owned, he's owed it. Yep, that's so, accurate. So what about my, my sanity whenever Sami Zayn's on the mic? Well, it's a sacrifice you're willing to make. Mm, I don't know. But either way, um, technically we, we gave Fraser the pity vote of two. Um, I actually got 10 points and Nathan got eight. So as far as stars go, I'm, st- I'm ahead at this point, but as I always say, there's still a long road to go. We've still got another 11 months. So we'll see what those 11 months bring. But speaking of which, we actually have predictions to do, gentlemen. 
if I can just find the uh where are you? Uh hold on. I'm trying to think no, there wasn't an AW one, was there? There's New Year's Evil, which is NXT, which I believe is on Wednesday. I think yes, it's it's an NXT show. All right, let me just so uh, I don't really I don't consider that a pay-per-view because it's actually I know, NXT. but technically you wouldn't yeah, but you wouldn't have any of these matches on a normal uh, NXT show. Besides, I, I think it just makes it better, or as I prefer to, I prefer to think of it, as making Fraser's uh, Fraser's uh, funeral even better. Well, what are you talking about? His picks were great. Oh no! What about last year when he absolutely got hammered at the Royal Rumble, and then he just like sucked for the other ten months of the year. So let me just make sure that there's no uh, other matches that I haven't got on here at the minute. Um, hang on. Uh, right. Uh, hold on. There's actually four matches on here, but I actually had... Have I got five or four? Two, three... I've actually got five on here, but for some strange reason, I can't see um, AJ Styles versus... Uh, that was the reason that... Um... That was actually on last week. Like there was. I thought I thought we were gonna. Oh, fair enough. Then. So it's just okay. four matches then. I... Let me just go double check. Just by all means, go and have a cup of tea. I'll be as quickly as I can. But but seriously, I don't know why you think Fraser's funeral is going to happen. Those picks are fantastic. Like, I'm sorry, I I I don't think you could have picked any better. Oh. So there's Tommaso Ciampa versus Bron Breaker for the NXT title. Mandy Rose versus Raquel Gonzalez versus Cora Jade for the NXT women's title. The unification match between Roderick Strong and Carmelo Hayes. Riddle and MSK versus Imperium. Yeah, that's it. So I will take AJ Styles and versus Grayson Waller off, which, to be fair, I was like, I am actually looking forward to if they decide to do it again. So, gentlemen... What are we deciding as far as uh, uh, Matt Riddle and NSK versus Imperium consisting of Walton, Walter, Fabian Eichner, pardon me if I butchered his name, and Marcel Bart... I can't pronounce his name, sorry. Marcel... Marcel, Marcel Bartel. Sorry. Um, to be honest with you, they've done a whole storyline about Riddle and NSK, so it would actually be a pity if they lost. It genuinely would. I hate voting for Riddle, though. I know I do every, as well. Everything, everything you say is right, but... Riddle. So while you decide to like, do that, I'm going to go... I'm like, just going to no, put NSK no, so I, uh, his name in. Yeah, I, you got, you got, like, you got to go with Riddle and MSK. The problem that I have, and just hear me out on this, I don't think Riddle is going to stick around NXT so much if he's running around with Randy Orton and they're yeah. one of the most over tag teams ever. I'm sorry. I just don't like, I don't like RK bro. I don't like Riddle, but I have to go with Riddle and, and, and MSK on this. So we're all going Riddle and NSK. Oh yeah. Even though Walter is, has been like uh, NXT UK champion all year. Oh, I want, I, I want, I want, I want to put this like flat out here. Walter is the best talent out of all of these guys. But if you look at Riddle and NMSK and you look at the story they told, like, come on, you, you got to let them win. It's a great way to get, give MSK a bit of a rub off of Riddle. I love Imperium. I really, truly do. I do. But I got to go with Riddle and NMSK. Right, just while you've done that, I'm going to go and uh, put my put my picks in. So, we've all decided on NSK will win Imperium. The next match is the title unification match between NXT Cruiserweight Champion Roderick Strong, aka Roderick Strong Backbreaker, the uh, Roderick Strong story, which will be Nathan's favorite autobiography, versus the North American Champion Carmelo Hayes. Roddy Strong. Okay, why? 
Raw, you just said it yourself, the Messiah, the Backbreaker, Roger Strong, you know, oh, Undisputed a- Era, still ha- is Mr. NXT, has some of the best NXT matches. But unfortunately, and um, Undisputed Era is no longer there. They've jumped ship to AEW. Um, I have actually picking Roddy, Roddy Strong as well because, and I'm, I'm only hitting it, putting this out there because I generally think this could happen. I think Carmelo Hayes is ready for the upper card. And I generally I think that if he loses that American North American title, then he will be free to be, say, Bron Breaker's next chance because I have a feeling that Bron Breaker will win the NXT title. Here's the other thing, too. The rest of the Undisputed Era, except Roddy, has left. Yeah. If you're Vince McMahon and you are petty, which I truly believe he is, you want to keep Roderick Strong around. How do, how do you do that? Give him a title. That's a conventional way of thinking. Give him a title. He's 38. He's not going to the main roster. So we're saying Roderick Strong. Yeah, we'll, we'll be United Front on Roddy. Right. All, like, so again, all of them are picking Roderick Strong. Oh, I would do if my uh, if my spell checker could actually insist that Roderick is actually a decent name. Right, strong. Right then, uh, the women's NXT triple title in a triple threat match between Mandy Rose, who is the champion, Raquel Gonzalez, and Cora Jade. I've already done my pick, so I'm going to let one of you two go. I really want Raquel to win. I really want Raquel to win. I really want Raquel to win. I don't think she's going to win. I think if you're going to keep Mandy Rose looking as strong as she is. She needs to win this triple threat. She does. She needs to um, put, like, she needs to hold that belt, hold it strong because she's doing some of the best work she's ever done. Uh-huh. Um, that being said, I really want Raquel to win. She's not going to. Mandy yep. Rose. Yep. And uh, Fraser, don't tell me Mandy Rose again. Are we really becoming that predictable? I'm going to go for Raquel Gonzalez. She's great. I'm going to take the risk here. Yeah, but no offense, mate, but you always take the risk, and it's always your risk that never pays off. It's fine. I'm taking the risk. There's no risk, no rewards, and sometimes it does pay off. Yeah, but in your case, it's it's, uh, no risk. You don't get any rewards anyway. Well, normally when he takes risks and I take risks with him, it pays off. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention (laughs) the fact that we basically, me and Nathan actually won this lot of uh, predictions because basically we got our Royal Rumble predictions correct. <laughs> yep. So I'm taking right. the risk here. I got nothing okay, to Okay, right. So. I'm going to say what I'm going to say now. I too want Raquel Gonzalez to win. I, I genuinely do because I think she is kind of like, I'm not going to say she could be the next China, but you definitely have someone who reminds me of China a lot because she's tall, she's strong. She could happily run roughshod over the entire NXT locker room if she wanted. But at the same time, I know she's not going to. And neither is Cora Jade because the one consistency that they've always had with NXT champ- uh, women's champions is they've, they've always had long reigns. And Mandy Rose is in the third month now. So so as far as I'm concerned, you have not had a decent women's uh, NXT women's title reign unless you've had it at least six months. So I will... Th- Going to make a prediction now. Mandy will keep it, but I sincerely think at the NXT TakeOver at WrestleMania, she will lose it. Yep. So, so again, me and uh, my co-host, who kind of feel like we are on the same wavelength all the yeah, time. We are, mo- we are most of the time. Yeah, we are, yeah. So we have basically sided against Fraser, which automatically means we will win all the well. And now, gentlemen, the last one. Uh, Bron Breaker oh, versus Tommaso Ciampa for Bron. the NXT title. I have already made my prediction. Bron. All right, why? Um, okay, so, and this this has nothing to do with Bron Breaker. I think he's absolutely, I, I, he's, he's got the look. Um, and I said this with NXT's, um, last really big pay per view. You want to make a statement. This is your chance to reaffirm the statement that this is the future. I think that without Gargano around, Tommaso Ciampa has no real reason to be there. Uh-huh. I would like to see Tommaso Ciampa enter the Royal Rumble and enter onto main roster. 
because you need somebody legitimate on there with, uh, you know, the pandemic being what it is right now to WWE and the staleness of a heck of a lot of faces and heels, particularly on SmackDown. You want to see somebody make an impact. You want to give somebody a shot. Tommaso Ciampa is that guy for that reason. We got to get that belt off of him. We cannot have another Karen Cross on our hands. Right. I did was not going. I was actually going to say. Uh, I've actually said Ron Breaker, but not for the reason that Nathan has said. Although to be fair, that is actually a good point. How many times have they faced? Has it been they faced three times and uh, Ron Breaker <laughs> lost their last title match? So I'm not sure about like he's he's lost the singles, um, but anytime they've been in tag teams or major teams, Braun has won. And that's the problem. He if they've elevated him as high as he as he needs to be. If he does not win the NXT title this time, then as far as I'm concerned, his push has well and truly been fucked over. Yeah, Yeah, he's done. So he has to win this. He. They want to, I say the whole point of NXT War Games was the past versus the future. But if he's the future, then you have to give him the belt. He's, he's going to be the face of a brand if he stays in WWE and NXT. He's going to be the face of a brand for the next decade or so while he's still healthy. You need to show that NXT will actually start thinking about the future by giving probably one of the most promising guys on the roster the biggest title that there is. There's, there's, there's just no ifs or buts to it. It just needs to happen. If it doesn't happen now, Ron Breaker's NXT one, like Rhea Ripley's when she lost to uh, Charlotte Flair, will go downhill. He will spend months regaining what he actually got at or where he was going. And then he will probably be better for it. But at the same time, it's a long bloody climb all the way. It's a long journey all the way back up. So give him the title or that will be all he needs to know that he is not wanted at NXT. That's it. So, Fraser, now, before you give your pick, can I just offer you one bit of advice? Yeah. I know you you probably will say to Marcel Champa, and you will say it because it's a risk, but I think in your heart of hearts, you know that if Bron Baker does not win this, then his push is well and truly fucked over. Yep, but this is WWE we're talking about, and they tend to do that. Look how many times they shot down Tyson Kidd when he was chasing Pac for the NXT title belt. Yeah, I want Braun Breaker to win. I'm most likely going to go with Braun Breaker, but it it just seems like it. it, He's going to get screwed, but I'm still going to back Braun on this. So we all basically, except one match, we're all agreeing. Which is the NXT women's title match. So so I would just like to point out on mine and Nathan's behalf, Raquel, we wish you were going to be NXT title, uh, NXT, NXT women's champion, but we know you're not. But we we wish you were. We wish you were going to. But on a on the plus side, I really like what they've done with Toxic Attraction. I will say that. Yes. Uh we might have another one. Let me just go and see if um just go and have a look at something before I do anything. I don't even think I've put the uh, I've put the matches in. I just need to see if anything's changed. There we go. If I even wrote anything at all, which I did not. Uh, just bear with me a minute. Unfortunately, I've got to do this the hard way. Oh no! Dean actually has to type stuff. Uh... I've got to type it in on my phone because for whatever reason, um, it's logged me out of what I use. So I've got to do it the hard way. Oh, uh, what do we which, got? What do we got? Speaking of which, ladies and gentlemen, it's come to our attention that Michael Fraser lost and lost brutally in predictions. If you have any ideas for punishments, please let us know. We've got one that we will reveal soon. Yeah, we definitely but, have. But... But please let us know of any good punishment ideas you have for Michael Fraser for, you know, doing a great job on his predictions. I would actually like to see something involving Kenny Omega, maybe Kenny Omega. By the way, this is not limited to just wrestling. This is limited to anything. Yep, yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we are equal opportunity punishers. Hmm. Right, just let me finish typing all these in. So what else can we do to humiliate Michael Fraser while I type all this in? 
Well, that is a really good question. And for whatever reason, Michael Fraser is muted, but I'm sure he wants to say something. What are you guys going to make me do? Wear a fat suit next time we record the podcast? Oh, no, no, no. That's no. too easy. No, really, mate. You really think we'd make you do that? That it's is expensive. And not to mention the fact that it's a bit old and a bit so last so last uh, decade. As, not so much last decade, but last century. Well, I don't uh, want that. Oh, but trust me, no, you haven't. Although, to be fair, if you were going to wear a fat suit, we'd have you wear the fat suit uh, worn by Mike Myers and Austin Austin Powers. Yep. In gold member, where you basically say, where you basically uh, talk Scottish, and because your because your name is actually a fat bastard. Right, so let's practice, Fraser. Make sure exactly. that you get your Scottish roll out. Would you like some haggis? I'll tell you I'm something. Actually I, have actually, I do actually want to try. Actually, do you want to know something? Um, I seem to remember ages and ages ago that the Scottish actually have deep fried Mars bars. I don't know if they still do or not. Oh, they do. I would love to lovely. try that. They are lovely. Well, you you have not been a fat man until you've went to an Irish pub and had a deep fried bars bar. Oh, I really want that. I generally really, 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 really oh, want it that. It is so good. It's so good. Fraser wouldn't even dare give his kids that. <laughs> That's why he is us. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, if anyone can, and if anyone can actually uh, cook a deep fried mars bar, please let us know because I will be there as soon as I humanly can. Nearly, you want to get spot on the podcast? Just, just uh, offer to fry up Dean and Mars yeah, Bar. Exactly, just do that. Come down. It's going to be Dean's next series. He's going to be running around <laughs> England trying to find deep fried Mars Bars now. <laughs> to be fair, I, I do actually want to try. To be fair, I could actually make one um, with certain, with uh, different cuisines, to be honest. <laughs> so that would actually be good. Plus it had... Oh. Uh, it would actually uh, increase my uh, what do you call it my my uh, not so much my vocabulary but my uh, tasting range as well. Your palate. I'm gonna sophisticate up your palate. Uh, hold on, I'm nearly there. One, two, three, four. Right, I'm halfway through. So. Hold on, let me just do the... I'll do a complicated one first because this is actually involved in uh, the inspiration. Bless them. And I I do like those ladies so much. Oops. Doesn't really help when you've got a, when you've got a, a spell checker that literally checks the wrong thing, even though that's how it's correctly spelt. Well, we will wait. Say, keep in Go mind in. for the impact ones. We still have another show before yeah. hard to kill. Do we? It's uh, January 8th. There's going to be another impact between now and January 8th. So there might be more. So we'll just do the 8th as we do see them now. And then if there's any more come up, we'll uh, we'll have to we'll do silent ones to uh, add up for it. But to be honest with you, for a pay-per-view, I think that this is more than enough. I generally think there is. Cause not to mention the match that I'm just putting on here, actually is the uh, inaugural Knockouts X- Ultimate X match, which, to be fair, will generate headlines on its own. I'm torn with that match. We should leave that match. It is, there is a lot of... Um, there's six ladies in there. I am torn on that match. I'm really torn on that match. So am I. I 
the rest of these, honestly, I can probably like the rest of these. I can probably guess, but that one, that one, I've got no idea. Well, we're gonna have we're gonna have two picks each because there is more than two people in it. Have you got them all in, or I'm getting there. I've just got the uh, knockout. I've got just got the uh, Impact World Championship and the Death Mat and the uh, other two as well. So I've got all of them. I just need the two main title matches. So I do apologize. This is taking so long. I blame my PC for signing me out of. Uh, what I usually use. So, here's a question, and uh, just hear me out on this. Why, oh, why would you ever have Mickey James lose to Deanna Perrazzo. Why would you? Just, why just, would you? Just, yeah, why would you have Mickey James lose to Deanna Perrazzo? Deanna doesn't need the belt right now. To be fair, she's made a legacy. She doesn't. If she didn't win it again, ever, like you know, like Cody. No, Carter, I, I, the, I'm yeah. not saying. I'm not saying ever. I just mean Mickey's had the belt for like three months. And it's it's been in a rivalry with Perrazzo. And Mickey's a legend in the business. Like, not saying anything bad against Deanna Perrazzo. Absolutely, I would never do that. But if you've got the first ever knockouts, Ultimate X. Ultimate X to go up against... Anyway. That's, that's just my latent thoughts on this. Nearly done. I do apologize for keeping everyone waiting. Diona said 141 days as the AAA women's champion. Is she still women? She's still a AAA champion. Yep, 141 plus days. Jesus. Uh, right, one minute. been saying like right i know i know i know like for like 15 minutes now man i know it's just gotta write gotta write it in my hand that's the problem as if i'm using a keyboard which i can't because it's bloody signed me out of uh, what i usually use like i've been saying i think that's it gentlemen okay i am ready now okay so we got our impact ones all right i'll so I'll start with, I've actually wrote them down three. So I'll start with Josh Alexander versus Jonah. So I, I must admit, I haven't been keeping up with Impact lately, which is my own fault, and I do apologize. But the last time I remember is that Jonah has been steamrolling uh, Josh Alexander for a while. Yeah. Now, he is new to the company, obviously, I know this. So... There is, a, there is two ways to make someone debut. Get them to be a powerhouse, dominate dominate them every other aspect, but in a match to have them lose. Which is one way to go, but sometimes it's not the right way to go. So for me, I would like to see Jonah absolutely hammer Josh Alexander into the middle of next week. And then when Jonah is officially, I'll say officially put in as a mainstay, then you have Alexander get his revenge. But for me, Hard to Kill would be better for Jonah because Alexander doesn't need it. He doesn't need the victory. He's won, he's won every single title in the last year. He, all he needs is to do, is to help Jonah become a bit more of a, I'll say more of a, more of a, uh, more of a complete wrestler that can actually uh, mingle with the, uh, with the bigger boys like Josh Alexander, for instance. So, I say Jonah, although saying that, I will probably pick Jonah now and it will end up being Josh Alexander. I, be. I'm going to go the exact opposite route of you. There we go. I, I, I believe I, you had me until you said that you wanted Jonah to win. I want Jonah to brutalize Josh Alexander. I want 
I want all of that, everything you said. I want Jonah to make a statement. I want Josh Alexander to win by the skin of his teeth through maybe a roll-up or something like that, something where Josh gets brutalized, but he shows the heart of a champion. Because if you push Josh Alexander down the card with everything that he has done in 2021 and you have him lose to Jonah right away quick, I don't think it's going to be good for Josh Alexander. And I would argue you need Josh Alexander going forward as impacts top face. I really truly do. Um, At rebellion or whenever the, um, whenever the um, next uh, giant pay-per-view is um, maybe Bronson Reed goes, he gets a little bit of uh, training or a little bit of um, just a reliance or whatever. Um, then have Bronson come back and beat uh, Josh, but this time, no, I would argue Josh needs it more. Hmm. Fraser, you have to decide. Josh Alexander. Oh, so for the first time this year, I am being outvoted. After the way Moose beat him for the title and everything, he needs something to really get ice back on him. It will also help him look stronger as a former champion if he's going against someone like that's a powerhouse like this. And, you know, he's going up against the former Bronson Reed, uh, NXT North American champion. Uh, I think this could be a good point to get Josh Alexander back in the title picture. And he's been consistently great. They wouldn't have put all those belts on him if they didn't have faith in him. So, all right, then. All right, then. So, first one, we're divided. Uh, the second one will probably divide us even more because it is a 10 man hardcore war. The oh, teams of the Good even Brothers. Want to think about this one. I don't even want to think about this one. But you're going to have to. The Good Brothers and Violent by Design take on the team of Eddie Edwards, Rich Swan, Willie Mack, and Heath Ledger and Wine. Not Heath Ledger, sorry. Heath Slater and Wine. Heath no. Ledger! I'm going to apologize for that. What are you on? <laughs> Hey, yes, um, um, it's, it was actually very, very good for Impact Wrestling to go and bring back the dead. You know, we thought we could only do that with The Undertaker. But no, ladies and gentlemen, Impact has brought back the, you know, fourth, maybe fifth best Joker ever in Heath Ledger. And he's going to be in the 10-man hardcore war match. Uh, and, all of his, and all of his partners, I have to say, I'm sorry for the smell. They probably couldn't buffer that out. Uh, now, to be honest with you, I don't really... To be honest with you, this is a bit tough because on the one hand, you have two two heel teams which will, which will get along eventually, but something will happen and they'll turn on each other, which is a bit predictable. But then, but then you have so many... You have so many guys on the other team. I mean, there's only really... Uh, there's Heath and Rhino, there's Rich and uh, Willie Mack, but Eddie Edwards is the uh, odd one out of that lot, so... I know Eddie does. Obviously, we know Eddie Edwards. He is absolutely brilliant. He's a legend. But I honestly think, um, I think Eddie Edwards' team will win, but only because the Good Brothers and Violent by Design will turn on each other so badly that that uh, pandemonium will will ensue, and that will be the opening that Eddie Edwards' team needs to win. When I look at Team Eddie Edwards, I discard Heath Slater and Rhino. And I will say again, Slater. Heath Slater is his name. He has kids. And we need to make sure that we get Heath Slater's name right. Um, I know. But I look at Eddie Edwards. I look at Rich Swan. I look at Willie Mack. Those are guys that I want to win. And in the case of Rich Swan and Willie Mack, I need a bit more toughness on them if I'm ever going to buy them going forward. When I look at the Good Brothers in VBD, all I see is toughness. Like, giant, hardcore toughness. So, is this going to be a case where I go with what is safe, or is this going to be a case where I go with Dean and I see Impact building three new people to... um, potentially contend for an X division championship down the line or a uh, world championship down the line. 
and to be honest with you, when I look at Eddie, when I look at Rich, when I look at Willie, I see a lot of talent, a lot of potential, and I want to see what they can do with it, especially if they've got a little bit more grit to them. I'm going with Team Eddie Edwards. All right, Fraser? I'm going to go with Team Eddie Edwards. Impact needs to build up a lot more stars, and I think if he and Rhino can pull off some stuff as well, if they end up still teaming, we could get something good out of the Good Brothers, because I can't remember the last time anyone was ever hyped for a Good Brothers match. Oh. I'm sorry, oh but they have the tag titles for how long, oh and what God. have they done These with them? These are Omega's boys, and you're turning on them! So, he, when was the last really? time they did any good angles? When was the last time they had a really good match? Like, no offense, but like, brah, I, Lucha Brothers has them beat. That one cage match is, uh, is like above anything they've been doing lately when it comes to tag matches or pay-per-views. But that one cage match was above everything that everybody was doing. Yep, so the Good Brothers need something good, and I don't think they need the win here. They need some a team that's going to just come at them now and make things exciting and look at all the members of Eddie Edwards team. Like this is the best time to build up a bunch of other stars. Man, Dean's just like staring at me. Like I just shattered some time. Oh, yeah. <laughs> now I'm just concentrating on something, just a bit of a catch up. That's all it is. Right. So they yeah, need course, to build up other stars now. Like this is the time to build up uh, other stars on your roster. All of them are great in the ring and you can put Eddie Edwards against anybody on the roster and get magic. So this would be the time to put them over. The Good Brothers need that kick in the ass right now to do something. They do, actually. But I think they genuinely do. It's because they feel lost without uh, Kenny Goody, Goody, Goody. But the thing is, they're in different companies. They knew this was going to happen. So We're it's too busy just... calling AJ. I know, but hopefully AJ will actually come back at some point. We hope, anyway. Um, so with that being said, uh, we've first one we've agreed on as well. Uh, the next one is the X Division title match between Trey Miguel and uh, Mr. Diana Perazzo, uh, Steve Macklin. Trey, I got burned by not going with him once, I'm not doing it again. Go on, phrase Trey Miguel, Trey Miguel, great in the ring. They're not going to pull the X Division title off many anytime soon. Look at that feud he had against Sammy Callahan. How personal they got to the point they were, you know, Sammy was saying he couldn't do anything without anybody's help and everything. This X Division title reign is securing how good he is as a single star. So I don't think it's going to end here. And he's beaten him before and he can do it again. So now I agree with everything you've just said. Unfortunately, Fraser, while you were going over the last load, I was looking for looking to see what has happened. And what I've learned is is that Steve Macklin has been basically screwed out of the X Division Championship about three times. So I will just read what's on here. Um, in a three-way match to win the vacant impact X Division Championship, Macklin took exception to this, as while he technically lost his undefeated streak, he was yet to be pinned or submitted in singles competition, which is normal for impact. As such, he had another opportunity for the title face of Miguel Laredo Kid, who he beat to enter the match. At turning point there, Miguel earned a double pin on Kid and Macklin. Macklin was able to kick out while Kid did not, meaning Miguel retained the title. Macklin would later walk up and demand of one more match, which was denied. So basic and basically Macklin jumped Miguel to get this match. Now, now, in fairness, that's two matches, and two matches he has not lost. Now, I'm not quite sure how you want to put it, if you want to put it as just basic fluteness or that's how it's meant to be played, but we always go on about killing a, re- killing a wrestler's uh, momentum, but at the same time, I prefer to think of it as how many more excuses can you have for Steve Macklin not to win a match against him? If you literally don't do this now, and if you don't, if you do it to the next, if you say you're going to do it to the next pay per view and don't, it's also a case of Steve Macklin's run as a whole is over. So I do want Trey Miguel to win. Don't get me wrong. I do. Abs- he's a lovely lad. It's, he is. Literally the face of the X Division in literally every single aspect you can think of. I do want him to win, but at the same time, if Steve Macklin doesn't win this, then that is somebody else's X Division career buried for at least six months. So, with that said, that's third chance saloon. If he doesn't win this, win it this time, he won't get another. So, 
on that point, I'm going to say uh, Steve Macklin. But I say that. But I do want I do want Trey Miguel to win. I genuinely do. Right then, gentlemen, this is a bit of a uh, unexpected one. Uh, Mister Jordan Grace, Jonathan Gresham will take on Chris Saban in a title in a world title match for the Ring of Honor world title, which is uh, I don't, which is actually a bit weird, actually. So, Jonathan Gresham has recently won the uh, Ring of Honor world, world title. So the question is, well, we know where Fraser's is going to go. Let's be honest. Um, Who's going to win out of Jonathan Gresham and Chris Saban? I will just put it out there now. And I will just say Jonathan Gresham will win it. Jonathan Gresham. He was the ROH Pure Champion. He won the tag titles before of Jay Lethal. And they did a pretty big build up to him getting the world title. I don't think he's going to drop it to Saban here. I would love for Chris Saban to win it. But it's pretty obvious writing on the wall here. Mm. Nathan, did I just hear him go against Chris Saban? And if I'm wrong, I will, I will be shocked. But I don't think I'm so wrong. So you've here. gone against Kenny Omega's uh, good buddies. Now you go in against your your boyhood hero, Chris Saban. Um, They're not going to put it on Saban. So. I know. Well, I know this, but then again, we might be surprised. Oh God! I'm sorry. I'm having an out of body experience. <laughs> Fraser, are you okay? I'm yes. fine. I have been wondering that myself because he's gone against two of his besties. Like this is unheard of. I mean, he's going to be right by going with yeah, Gresham, but at the same time, it will not be good for him. Oh my god, Gresham! Let's make a United Frank Gresham. There's no reason why Jonathan Gresham needs to lose that. And there's no reason why Chris Saban needs to win it. I'm just in shock. That phrase has actually turned his back on his besties. In fact, fact, his besties. All of them. So, hold on a minute. 2nd of January, 2022. A date which will live in infamy as far as Michael Fraser is concerned. He turned his back on Kenny Omega's buddies and his boyhood hero. Yeah, so it's just right. it's obvious. That's the problem here. I know. Right then, boys. Uh, one map is actually a bit hard because, we, as far as I'm aware, these are both uh, heels. Uh, the Knockouts Tag Team Title match between the Inspiration, aka Cassie Lee and Jessica McKay, versus the influence, otherwise known as Madison Rain, Antonio Dashwood with Caleb with a K. In their corner. Now, this is actually quite difficult for me because I've had both of these ladies on Impact Press Pass. I believe me and Tennille Dashwood actually likes me. I'm not quite sure if the inspiration liked me or not, but this is actually quite hard. Plus, not to mention the fact that I believe this is a battle of Australia as well. Because I believe you've got three Aussies in this match as well. So, I'm going to let you two go while I try and uh, rationalise... One over I'm you. Go- I'm going to go with the inspiration. And the reason I'm going to go with it is, number one, a bit of a personal reason. And um, number two, at the end of the day, Madison Rain is a legend. And um, Tennille Dashwood doesn't need the push that comes with Madison Rain. I think this is a great way to get Madison Rain's feet wet. I think she's going to put on a heck of a show. But I don't believe that they need the championships The inspiration, on the other hand, has been doing really, really good things with them. I want to keep it in the inspiration's hands if I'm booking this and I'm booking this logically. The personal reason is, I'm sorry, Madison Rain, who are you married to? Oh, yes, yes, we know who she's married to. So... Old friend of a show who can't pronounce our name. so So with that being said, I hope... She loses terribly, and I hope she blames Josh Matthews. Mm, I can, I can go with that. To be honest, in fairness, I probably would go for inspiration as well because they've only just got the tag titles. And to be honest with you, I think there's been, as far as I am concerned and remember, too many 
In fact, didn't their last tag team title run in a certain other company last for ages, but they did not literally hardly did anything with them. So I would like them to have a long, long run, but I would actually like them to be fighting champions, which I'm beginning to believe at this minute in time in Impact they are. So I would actually like Inspiration to actually beat these lot. But then again, I don't think Tennille or Madison Ray needs this anyway, especially Madison. She's already been there and done that. I'm going to go Inspiration. Yes. Yeah. I'm going to say you really actually have no loyalty here. So this is actually quite simple for you. They had a really strong debut. They've been great since showing up. They have a good look. They've completely changed it since the iconic days. I, I think they're going to pull the win off here. Right. We're on our last three now, gents. Obviously, this one is a bit different because it's the inaugural Ultimate X match. For, with, for, it's, a, it's a shot at a number one contendership for the Knockouts of the Championship. Now, there is six ladies in this, but we will mm. say you can have two bet, two bets each. Now, this is actually quite tough because all of these women are worthy of being in this match. I hate you, Impact. I know. Chelsea I Green, a.k.a. Mrs. Mrs. Matthew Cardona, versus Jordan Grace, a.k.a. Mrs. Jonathan Gresham, versus Rosemary, versus Rachel Ellering, versus Lady Frost, and versus Tasha Steeles. So... Do you know what? I'm tempted to go for the uh, Mr. Mac- Mr. Matthew Cardona and Mr. Jonathan Gresham, actually. Or the Mrs. I, Jonathan. You know what? I'm actually going to agree with you. So Chelsea and Jordan. Yeah, And, the and in o- fairness, I, I know exactly what's going to happen because it's going to blow up in our faces. So I might... Well, here's, might the, actually- here's the thing. I've got a reason why I'm going to go with Chelsea Green and Jordan Grace especially Chelsea Green, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But I will agree with you wholeheartedly. Because, yeah, it's, it's quite, kind of funny, isn't it? That, yeah. Miss, that, Mr. I... that Mrs. Jo- that Mr. Jordan Grace and Mr. Matt Cardona are on this. on this, And it's just kind of like, well, how can this work? But I know what's going to happen. I... I know exactly what's going to happen. Because we'll pick them two. They won't win it. And I, have a, I actually have a bit of a... Uh, I don't know why, but I have a bit of a hunch that Rachel Ellering will win it. I don't know why, but I just I just have a feeling. That was actually my pick, though. Rachel Ellering, and I'm going to go with Chelsea Green. Hold on, let me put Nathan's in. Nathan with me. So, hold on a minute, Fraser, what's yours? Chelsea Green and Rachel Ellering. I don't think Jordan Grace is going to get it just because didn't she just get a championship recently too? She did, yeah. Um, so, but to be fair, when was the last time we had... Uh, we, in fact, I don't think we've ever had two knockouts titles on the line. But then again, it'll just be the knockouts on the line for whoever wins out of Mickey James and Deanna Perrazzo. It won't be hers. But then again, that could easily play into a storyline where she loses said title if it is Jordan Grace. Yep. And for me, this is match of the night for me. Like, this is the one match I've been excited for since I heard about it. And I can't even remember the last time I saw an Ultimate X match. But this is what I've always loved about uh, Impact. Would you ever see something like an Ultimate X match for the, for the WWE women's title? No, you wouldn't. We only got one that's worthy of an Ultimate X match. Exactly. That's why, that's why I love Impact so much. They are pushing the boundaries that other companies would not. I mean, with all due respect, AEW had... I actually watched highlights of Anna Jay and Ty Conti versus uh, The Bunny and Penelope Ford. My fucking God. I haven't seen so much carnage since Hunter beat Cactus Jack in 2000. Oh, yeah, that, that was great. Uh, Mick really put me over there. Oh yeah, yeah, exactly. That's what I want for my for my wrestling product. I don't want it where everyone's played safe. So, with that being said, we've both agreed. We've all agreed that Chelsea Green is our pick, but we have a feeling that it might not happen. But I would actually, I I do hope Matt Cardona wins because then if him and Chelsea do end up, uh, if Chelsea does end up winning and not winning that and the knockouts title. They could be effectively known as Mr. and Mrs. Champion. 
I, uh, <laughs> you, you actually read my mind when it came to booking things. <laughs> um, th th think of think of Impact as a power couple, and think of everything Cardona has been doing in all of the ways that Impact will traditionally get fans going through through the underground, like ground swelling, ground rising up, and a lot of um, just walking out on certain promotions, looking for the best of the best. Goes to Impact, all of a sudden Impact has Cardona, will Zack Ryder do amazing things as champion? No disrespect to Moose or Big Cass. Mm. But can you imagine Cardona and Chelsea Green as the power couple of impact? That would actually be nice as well. Like, that would that be nice. Like just <laughs> like just in, in fact, you know what? I'm gonna put actually put I was actually gonna pick I was actually a bit unsure, but now that I brought that point up about being a being a power couple and being Mr. and Mrs. Champion, I might just put Matt Cardona in. Yeah, put I I would go with Cardona because uh, I'm I'm sorry. That's what I'd like to see. That 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 would be fresh yeah. in such a way yeah, because it, it it would be like what would happen if you gave Seth Rollins the uh, WWE Championship with Becky Lynch. Technically, didn't they do that? Yeah, but it sucked, and they were both did, faces, that, and Rollins didn't want to talk because. Becky would eviscerate him on the mic. Yeah, pretty much. So if you're like if I if I'm looking at this and I'm looking at just the attitude of Chelsea Green and Matt Cardona and everything they've done, and if they're destined for greatness and impact is going to be the spot where they do it, and hard to kill is the start of a new year, and you've got somebody like a Braun Strowman waiting in the wings for impact. Which, you which totally we have a feeling it might be. Which you totally do. Don't don't tell me wrong. You need you need a. I, I'm not going to say Moose was a bad champion, but can you imagine? You need somebody on the mic who can carry Strowman. Mm. Because inside of the ring, Cardona and Strowman would would tear the house down. Yeah, I'm sorry they would. And if you had Chelsea Green helping Cardona cheat. Oh God! Come on, Fraser. Come on, join us on the Cardona side. We all know I was going to choose Matt Cardona, Zach Ryder. He's been killing it on the independents. He's been picking up multiple belts. Look what he did in GCW with Nick Gage and everything. Like I, I want him to win. He has been so good everywhere he's popped up. He's had great matches, great on the microphone. And this, again, would be one of those moments that if he picks up the world title, it's going to show everyone how good Matt Cardona is. He said it best um, that WWE was his developmental, and now he's out there, you know, wrestling for real. That's actually... You know what? It's so funny. We've I've literally gone... Miss, I've literally gone... Uh, Mrs. Matthew Cardona and uh, Mrs. Jonathan Gresham. And I thought, you know what? I'll just have them two as picks. Why not? <laughs> like, um, I want this to happen so badly. I, want I know I do. Win this boat. Plus, uh, Chelsea Green has actually been, you could say, absolutely hammering it as far as digital media goes because she has been yeah. doing a lot of intergender matches as well, which is no easy feat anyway. So it's about time she had some reward for it. But unfortunately, in case she does win it, we also need to decide who's going to become or who is going to be the knockouts champion after Hard to Kill because it is Hardcore Country herself, Mickey James, Diana Perrazzo, actually arguing rather than agreeing on one thing that they actually did last year, which was they could not name an opponent who remind, of who their opponent reminds them of. Which is not only any ordinary match, it will be a Texas death match, which, as I understand it, is just like a variation of Last Man Standing. So basically, we are going to test Mickey James's uh, title of Hardcore Country, which we definitely are. Gentlemen, this is hard for me. It generally is because I have championed Diana Perrazzo ever since she came to the company. It's two years. All... He has have... been uh, like. He has been on her ass since he first started this podcast. Um, you know, the I've not been on her ass. The the producer's like, okay, who do you want? Who do you want, honey? And he's like, Tiana. And 
you know, when he finally got her, you could you could, so feel, you could feel his soul just swell up with pride. He finally got Diana Perazzo. Mm. But he's going to go against her. I don't know. You he's see. going to turn his back. I don't know. I genuinely don't know. I mean, the thing is, we don't know if how long Mickey's staying with Impact because bearing in mind she is um, mainly associated with NWA. Does the honor need the knockout belt again? Uh, I would say she does, but at the same time, it would also be a little lie because she's held the title for so long. It is time for someone fresh to possibly get it. If it is Chelsea Green, fair enough. But at the same time, would losing hurt Diana more than it would Mickey? I generally think it might. But at the same time, Mickey's not been champion that long. So if you are going to make her a credit, a credit, I can't say it now, a creditable champion like she was in the olden days, you'll have her keep it until she eventually loses it, which I hope is to Chelsea Green. So it's hard. Believe me, gentlemen, it is. The only way this would benefit me is if it was actually a double count out, which, to be fair, it might very well be, given how the uh, <laughs> the laws of wrestling change from uh, year to year. But do you know what? I'm going to apologise to Diana right now. I'm so sorry, but I believe it. I believe Mickey James will still be champion. And yes, it does. It does hurt me a lot to say that. I'm I'm right with him, and I'm going to I, I'm going to say just my thoughts on this flat out. A, I agree with everything he said. You need Mickey James to hold that belt just a little bit longer. I do not believe Diana Perazzo is anywhere close to being done with the Impact Knockouts Championship, but she just lost it. And if you're going to submit Mickey James as being that good and that pillar for somebody else to topple, you need Mickey to win. What I want to see and what I hope to God happens as the person who won Impact Predictions last year. He did. Um, I want to see Mickey James win I want to see Deanna do some soul searching and I want the new power couple of Cardona and Mickey James. The first thing they do. Well, not Cardona and Mickey James, Cardona and Chelsea. I did notice that actually, but I didn't say anything. I saw, I saw, (laughs) but yeah, no, the, 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 yeah, the new power couple, Zack Ryder's going to drop Chelsea green fast. No. Um, So if you have uh, Cardona and Chelsea green and you have them, um, the first thing I want them to do is make sure that Chelsea in the most violent, brutal match ever takes down the legendary Mickey James. That's the first thing I want them to do. I want them to rule impact with an iron fist. Um, I, I want at bound for glory, Deanna Perazzo to always be the person because like she and Mickey have had a very tenuous relationship that has always made for great TV and, it's made for good viewing as well. Yeah, just like great, just a great thing. I have There's never so laughed much. so much in my life. There's so much deep-seated <laughs> respect there, though. So if you can imagine if Chelsea Green takes down Mickey James and Mickey James cannot come back for whatever reason, who takes up that mantle? Deanna Perazzo. Uh-huh. Who is the only woman equipped to beat Chelsea Green? Deanna Perazzo. That's what I would love to see as a booking. So for that reason, I'm going with my booker soul here. Mickey James has to win. Oh, Fraser, come and join the hardcore country followers. I'm going with Mickey James. I think it'd be amazing if Diona Peraza has to chase her the NWA. I feel like they would just give them another uh, wrestling ring to just paint the story even bigger which would be fantastic for the both of them. So, and I don't think Mickey's going to lose it right now anyway. Right, gentlemen. So, um, sorry, sorry, mate, I thought you finished just because there was a bit of a pause. Um, so, out of the eight matches, we've agreed on five of them. We have disagreed on three of them. Albeit for very different reasons, and to be honest with you, all of the reasons have merits. But at the same time, 
we just we just don't know because obviously between now and now and next Saturday things might change. I mean, no offense, but we actually supposed to have two world title matches at day one, and we only got one. So, but to be honest with you, I would actually if that if that does come true and Chelsea does become number one contender, I would love a visit from no one from no one else but Nick Holders. I genuinely would, because then you would have two couples going at each other. Why, oh why, oh why, oh why did you try to turn this into the Nick Aldis show? Well, it's not as if I'm obsessed with Nick Aldis, like Fraser's obsessed with Kenny Omega. Well, I mean, yeah, that is true. Up there. Oh, no, mate. Uh, what was it for however many months it was? Oh, Kenny Omega's the best in the world ever. I don't go around saying that. I just happen to know that Nick Aldis is actually very talented. No offence to him. I do like him. He is a he's a great champion. He's British, let's put it that way. The one thing I have never said about Nick Holders is he is the best in the world. I have never said that. You, however, sir, outweigh the welcome on that about one month into, into one of Kenny Omega's reigns. That was it. Yep, so, no, I, this is not up there. It will year. never be up there. For the full year plus 700 days as the AAA world champion, you know. And you and you say, I'm up, my, I'm up there with Nick Aldis. No offense, but I think we both know who is already up there. It's Nathan and Shawn Michaels. Yup! Damn up, right then, it is! If you add it up, Kenny had, you know, belts combined together for like 1,065 days, so... And did you notice? And also, I seem to remember Fraser. You said Nick Aldis, um, that Nick Aldis was actually asked to face Kenny Omega, but he just wanted to concentrate on NWA. But let's face it: if he would have gone in there, that would have been it. He would have lost his title. That's what he thought with Cody Rhodes too, but he was wrong. Yeah, but That's Cody good. Rhodes isn't Kenny Omega. Not to mention the fact that now I'm pretty sure nobody likes Kenny Omega. Um, I will say one thing, gentlemen, just before we move it on. This is, to be honest with you, it's kind of, I'm kind of already said about Ty Conti and Anna Jay versus Penelope Ford and the Bunny. I will say one thing, Impact will have to top that. They have to, because no offence, but all I thought about since I've seen the highlights was that match. And the first thing I thought of was, holy shit, why can't the WWE ever do anything like that? So, what as far as I'm concerned, Impact will have to put on an Ultimate X match that it has never put on before to rival that. Let's face it, WWE is out of the picture. It will never rival that. It doesn't have the imagination. It doesn't have the willpower. It definitely doesn't have the brains. So, as far as the uh, predictions go, I wish you good luck, gentlemen. But ultimately, I wish you bad luck because, let's face it, 2022 will be my year. And what's that come back on me now? But I've said it. <laughs> oh yeah, it's good. It's gonna be about you, you guys. Instead of finishing second, I'm gonna finish dead last. Actually, the only person who has to finish dead last here is Mr. Fraser. It's fine. You know what? I, I think we should give him one of his forfeits now. I generally think we should. Oh, uh, so. well, we actually which, we which, are actually which forfeit? Up, we, which forfeit do you want to give him, dude? I can't remember. I don't even know how we. have Thought of that many. I well, can't even it's I. Is. You know. You know what? I'm going to be. I'm going to be nice to you and um, just. Um, just sit. Well, actually, no, I'm not because I total. Oh wait. Oh, I know where it is. Yeah. I know where we, uh, are. Why don't we? Why don't you go that. into Fraser? Do you have a topic or? Dean wanted to talk about Liv Morgan. So all right, you talk about Liv Morgan. I'm going to find the lovely list of forfeits because we got a ton for you. <laughs> we have, we have got so much. All right, then. Um, I did ask this. I asked this in the chat last week. Um, now, obviously, we know from predictions that Liv Morgan lost to Becky Lynch. But the thing is, um, do we think Liv Morgan is main event material? To be honest, um, I think a lot of a lot of doesn't matter who it is, whether it's a, if it's a woman or a man, they do have the, the uh, ta- if they have the talent and the desire, 
and the fan base, they can be main event. I mean, Matt Cardona was not main event in WWE. Now look at the guy. I generally think that Liv Morgan could be a main event player. And God forbid this ever happens. If she's handled properly, if she's not buried. Because, don't get me wrong, WWE has always had a problem with burying its talent. They do it every nearly every single week or every single month, whichever one applies at the time. I do like Liv. I genuinely do. And it's not just of an absolutely gorgeous ass, because that's it's another reason entirely. But I will say she's come on heaps and bounds. And no offence, but I actually think her promo work has significantly improved since Ruby and Sarah have left. I will genuinely say that. She got a bit of flack for bringing Sarah and uh, Ruby in for the reason of their firing was because of Becky's wage, which, on the other hand, could be considered a masterstroke by some. But at the same time, was it a bit wrong? Yes. But then again, it's, I, d- I don't seem to remember a lot of, um, is this right? Should we do it in the olden days? But they still did it anyway. In no offence, but in the Attitude Era, you had people run over by cars. You had Austin dropping Triple H from a crane, God knows how many how many thousand feet up, how many hundreds of feet up. The fact of the matter is, this is how I, I truly feel. If she's handled right, she can be. But regardless, if she's not, and she just happily goes to another company, she will be main event. She's main event material. She's come so far. I don't agree with WWE burying her under Becky Lynch because... She, they can't keep doing this to other talent. If, very soon, they won't have any talent to actually bury because they'll have lost all of it. I know Roy Rumble's coming up at the end of this month. And uh, I genuinely hope she gets another shot because I want her to actually have a title because there has been far less worthy of actually being champion than her. Nia Jax, totally unworthy of being champion, was champion. And everybody else who has been totally unworthy of being champion has been champion. She has actually got a lot of things going for her. Please make her a champion at some point this year, preferably at the Royal Rumble. It's just got to be done the way, it's just got to be done properly with her. It can't be done half assed and it can't keep a case of, oh yes, we'll kiss Becky Lynch's ass just so she keeps the title. It doesn't work that way. It can't work that way. So can she be a main event player? I will say yes. If it's not in the WWE, she will be a main event player somewhere else. I mean, like I said, look at Matt Cardona. He's bloody challenging for a world title. He is world champion material. So, yes, but please, to God's sake, do it properly for her. Any person has the ability to be a main event player. Any person. Do I think that Liv Morgan is in a position right now where she can be? Absolutely not. A, you're not going to get... Like, Liv Morgan is not on the talent level of Becky Lynch. I'm sorry, she isn't. Um, When you look at the way that Becky captured, you know, the minds and the hearts of thousands upon thousands of people just by finally letting it go and having the balls, unlike a certain other wrestler who doesn't have any, um, to... To be able to go to be able to go in and say, screw it, I don't care, um, and go completely balls to the walls and have it work and have her get over, regardless of there were there were two instances where WWE tried to squash her that just didn't work. Um once is by having her lose, didn't work, she's still a badass. The other one is by having her apologize, didn't work, she broke her nose and just became that much more of a badass. To me, because the WWE finally realizes how good Becky Lynch is, it's going to be that same cycle before you find somebody with the skill set and the talent that is anywhere even close. Liv Morgan is not Becky Lynch. I'm sorry, she isn't. She doesn't have the mic skills. She doesn't have the resolve. She doesn't have the relationship with one of WWE's top talents in Seth Rollins. She doesn't have a lot of the things that made Becky Becky. And if you are looking for a main event talent on either side of things, you are either going to be looking at Roman Reigns or you're going to be looking at Becky Lynch. And if you can get something close to that, because as Michael Fraser has said on this podcast several times, especially when it comes to WWE, 
Um, they are the same character. So if you're looking at the archetype of Roman Reigns and the archetype of Becky Lynch, um, you're not going to make them so long as you've got Roman Reigns and Becky Lynch on your card. Um, and is she main means, event worthy, though? Is she main event worthy? I honestly, it's done I, have, I, have, I have to see it. I have to, I have to, because right now my answer is no. But I would want to see what she would be like given the reins if she is main event worthy. Because if she were given the reins, she could prove that she is absolutely insane. For for example, New Year's Revolution uh, 2005, when, oh wait, it wasn't 2005, what the heck am I saying? It was 2006, when Edge cashed in on Cena. We didn't uh-huh. think Edge was main event worthy. Don't tell me we did. How Edge got main event worthy was by being absolutely devastating on the mic while promising a live sex celebration oh, while God. being the absolute worst kind of human being anywhere possible. And you could tell that was all Edge and Lita or Edge and Foley like to the point where you'd go to WrestleMania 22 where you know your main event picture is nice and safe. You've got Cena and Triple H with Cena overcoming the odds. Whoop de doo. What are people talking about? Shawn Michaels and Vince McMahon and Edge and Foley in that hardcore match. It was there where Edge proved he's a main event player. And that whole run when Edge was given the championship for those two or three months, if you weren't watching Shawn Michaels, you were watching Edge. It was there when Edge was given the reins that he was proven to be, at least to me, a main event talent. So come on, Fraser. Um, I know you kind of have more feelings for the floozy known as Ruby Riot than anyone. Ah, floozy needs to die. I mean, what are you doing here? We barred you. I fired you. I know, but Michael Fraser and all of his love needed me back. I could feel it in my bones. Oh, damn it. Yeah, we'll have to fire security, I know. Who did you end up getting, Ralphus? I don't know. Jerry goes not so much. We might have got Kevin Nash and his John Wick duties, who basically had a gun pointed to his head and said, uh, take the night off. Please, you. I was hoping Lucian. Basically, they're never going to let Liv Morgan push through it because Vince McMahon's a freaking hack who hasn't had a relevant storyline since before the Attitude Era, which he coasts off. And if he had any brain cells left, he would put Triple H in charge because Triple H is the only one that cares about that company and doing right. Stephanie Mann also has to get off her freaking high horse at the rate that she complains where, where people try and bury her. Meanwhile, her and the rest of the family bury every single star. Liv Morgan show one MITV because everything got built around her. She literally has been the focus on and off, on and off. They yet again won't give the fans what they want. She could be. Literally, even if she somehow beats Becky with a roll-up or catches the ropes, like something, they could basically still protect Becky because Becky doesn't need the belt. Liv Morgan should have won the belt like a while back, but they don't plan to do anything with her. So at this point, I'd rather see Liv Morgan leave. I think she could be a main event uh, wrestler, but they're going to have to kick and burn down half of creative to do it because face it, all of them are out of touch at this point. They don't want to build new stars, and that's why WWE, every time they get put in the corner, we get something like Crown Jewel, where half the legends make themselves look like clowns. That's why Undertaker had to come back that one time after the sad attempt at wrestling Goldberg. I would love to see Liv Morgan hit, become a better star and get better. She needs. She doesn't need to be, get repackaged. Her stuff works. She has an underdog type character right now, and the fan the fans want to see her get over. But unless she gets like that deep Ryan type support, it's not going to happen. But I think she could do it if they would finally pull the trigger on her. I think they could do it, even if it's like like what happened with Ryan Pastor and Austin Mataro. Even if it's like a title reverse decision and watch like the reaction from the crowd, they could do <laughs> something, with it, but they're not going to. I think she could, but not with the current people running things. Oh, God, I remember that. That was so yeah. much fun. 
Um, all right, then, Phrase. If she did end up leaving, could she be main event elsewhere, say Impact or AEW? I think she could do good in AEW, especially if she reteams up with Ruby. The women's division could really use her. Yeah. To really elevate itself, because now would be the time. The way women's wrestling is booming in other organizations, this would be the time to make the jump of anything. Hmm. Well, I guess that's sorted out. Now uh, we actually have the. Uh, <laughs> we actually have a. Well, I'm not quite sure what we have here, but I sure we did have some weight. <laughs> <Stay like that. laughs> Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, where you may be, and welcome to the very first episode of Body Slams and Drop Kicks. At least that, that's what we'd be saying if it was 2020 when we actually started it. Yeah, that's right. That's right. See, we have received some official fan mail from the Kenny Omega fan club last night uh, that we just had to share with all of you. We've been waiting for this moment now that Fraser's nice and fired up. But uh, Dean, I know you've got that letter, so why not go ahead? Uh, Do I have to share it? I don't want to read the stupid twatting letter. It's the Kenny Omega fan club. Who the hell would want anything from there? Well, Well, see, the thing is you promised to read the mail. Who the hell did I promise? Uh, the producer. Oh, please. I'd butcher her for breakfast if I could. Dean? No, 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 I can't. I'm sorry, I can't. Oh, Dean, come on. Come on, man, come on. No! Dean? Oh, all right, fine. But you have to say take is better than Shawn Michaels. Uh, you know I can't do that. Uh, my contract prohibits it. Yeah, well, uh, I guess, well, I am one who actually is quite fine with his contract, so I can understand that, right? <clears throat> Dearest Michael Fraser, we love you immensely, but unfortunately, we've got this letter for you. We hope this letter finds you well. Kenny Omega has been watching you for a very long time, and he must say he is extremely displeased with your god awful 2021 pay per view prediction scores. Kenny Omega values fans with intelligence and integrity. Not someone who claims to read more DC than Marvel, but fails to know the glory that is Aquaman. Did you know Aquaman was partially inspired the former Impact wrestler Sharkboy? No, of course you didn't, because you're incapable of independent thought. And your predictions reflected that Kenny could not, could not have such a dullard representing him, his accomplishments and his success. It is for this reason that we must bestow a cease and desist order on you, barring Michael Fraser from saying his name or picking in any predictions, as a Fraser pick, almost guarantees his loss. Actually, it will it will literally guarantee his loss. I, I don't know, Dean. This seems pretty harsh. I know, I know. What would Fraser do, not being able to defend Kenny or say anything positive about Kenny? <laughs> well, I, I know. He, he would probably die. Uh, is there any way he can get out of this? Right. Uh, hold on. Let me, let me see. Legal liabilities? No, no. Cease and desist order. Well, he'd never do that. Uh, proof they know where Fraser lives. No, nobody. To be honest with you, you can't really get to where he lives anyway. It'd be, you'd need a map, which I don't even think anybody has nowadays. And then you'd need a bit of luck getting there. Uh, but, but Vince McMahon selfies? Oh, God, no. Oof. Why have you got these in this file, Fraser? Ah, here we go. This is, of course, this, of course, is unless Kenny, Michael Fraser proves his love for Kenny Omega by completing what has been known as the Seven Trials of Omega. Wait, wait, wait. The Seven Trials of Omega? Yep. Seven magical feats proving that Michael Fraser will overcome anything to get the love of Kenny Omega back. Wait, wait, wait. Does it say anything else? Uh, mm-hmm. Well, the letter has the first trial, apparently. Fraser must sing How Far I'll Go from the hit Disney movie Moana in full makeup done by his daughter. Then apparently throughout the rest of the year, we must think of six more trials. Well, I mean, Dean, that seems almost criminal. Think about it. We could ride Fraser's ass all year. Yeah, can, you think, can you think of the humiliating things he'd have to do? That almost seems unfair. Who would think of such a thing? Who indeed, my dear Nate? Who indeed? Mm. You guys are weird. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to complete the seven trials of Omega. Yes. Oh. So we hope we hope you enjoyed mentioning Kenny all this time because this is the last time you're going to do it until you complete it. <laughs> <laughs> happy, happy New Year, Fraser. Happy New Year. Yeah, happy New 
New Year. Yay! <laughs> oh boy. Um, oh. We, to be honest with you, some of it, we've tried to make them as easy as possible for you. Sure, we have. <laughs> yeah, we have. Oh. Actually, there is one in particular that we have actually favoured towards you and your oh. knowledge. So. It's not as if you won't know this. If you're a true Kenny Omega fan, you will know it. Yeah. We're not going to tell you what it is. Oh, yeah, it's anyway. But I have a feeling, you know what we should have done? We should, we should have told them to make it the 12 labors of Kenny Omega. Then we could have had one each month. Oh, now that would have been something. Well, well mm-hmm. don't worry, he'll lose again. Yeah, he will. He will, yeah. So with that being said, his first oh. trial... If I can remember the conversation correctly, because I'm so excited. Oh, so was, uh, oh yes, apparently Fraser must sing How Far I'll Go from the hit Disney movie Moana in full makeup done by his daughter. In no. that case, um, show, how no. many weeks shall we give him? Because we know he is a busy boy, like as we I'm all are. not have. doing it. Really? You're not doing it? Why You're doing not? it for the love of your life, Kenny Omega? Oh, my I goodness. Nope, not doing it. But you'll happily do it for what, what was that song he did it for that time? Oh, he did Let It Go. Uh, and that's exactly. because you lost, let it go, but you'll not he, say how far you'll he go. Lost a, he lost oh. a bet for Let It Go. And this time he, he lost something much, much worse than that. Where is Helena anyway? We have not seen the lady all night. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, she's in my room watching TV and stuff. Oh, and no. Nathan, 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 I've actually got another idea. You, you do? Know, yes, any trials that Fraser refuses to do, Mrs. Fraser shall choose for him. Oh! Oh, oh that's brilliant. Oh, that is brilliant. Actually, do you know what? I'm going to mail Jesse. I don't know. I think she's oh, in work, please. but I'll still mail her anyway. I don't, I don't care, man. We don't care. We will do it. Uh, but, but, but where is your where is lovely Jessica? Here she is. Uh, right. We are doing the seven trials of Omega. The trials. Oh, sorry, the seven trials of Omega. Of Omega oh as punishment for Fraser losing last year. <laughs> Boy, did he lose? <laughs> oh God, did he lose? Losing three bout, three sets oh. of predictions. Uh, but technically, he lost two, but he lost two of them so badly that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> three sets of predictions. So he's refusing the first one. First one. So, as his loyal wife, and let's be honest, she owns his ass more than anything. Yeah, it's true. As his loyal wife and ass kicker, which to be fair, she is. You get to choose. You can choose his first punishment. Now, I think it's now normally we would say that it has to be done on camera, but I actually, I actually believe Mrs. Fraser will will not be biased to us and not say just to get him out of it. I think she will be genuine and sincere. We'll put it this way: she's the head of she's the head of Final Cut's table. She yeah. has to lead by example. It's true. <laughs> so come on, Fraser. It's not as if she's going to ask you to do something really bad. Yeah. Trust your wife, my friend. Trust your wife. That's why you married her, because you love her. Yes, 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 yes. But apparently more than Kenny Omega, because you don't want to do the first <laughs> trial. <laughs> 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 Oh, I'm sorry. I think we got to cut it. said this was going to be epic, but we didn't realize it was going to be this epic. I think we got to cut it there, man. Like, like there is oh, nothing listen, we can Let's say and get on the high that is with Fraser with renouncing his love for Kenny Omega. Um, yeah. Oh, man. Anyway, you can Fraser find Fraser doesn't love Kenny Omega anymore. Fraser doesn't love Kenny Omega anymore. 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 Oh, man. Fraser oh, man. Hates Kenny Omega, 
Actually, do you know what it is? Could you sing us out on something like that? Sure, sure thing, sure thing. I, I absolutely, I absolutely can. Um, we'll, give you two, we'll give you two minutes to think but, something. No, I've, 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 I've already got it. I've already oh, you've already got it, got it right. Um, so, um, ladies and gentlemen, you can find me on uh, www.deathpixies.ca. You want to talk to me about voiceover projects or commission me for one of your own? www.deathpixie.ca. Um. Thank you so much for inviting us into your homes. Uh, and in honor of my two co-hosts, if you don't mind, <clears throat> lay a whisper. Shall we end it? Shall we end it on uh, Mr. Omega or not? Oh, yes, please. But why not? Yep. Yeah. Right. So I'll go next. Um, by the way, um, I have actually said this on uh, the Directors Club podcast, but I'll say it again. Thank you for everyone who listened, streamed, uh, sh- shared, basically did anything involving our podcast obviously not in the mean way obviously but we still appreciate everyone there and we know we've got at least more than one listener because we're still waiting to hear if our kenny omega roasting session broke was actually a record or not in fact why has the producer not mailed us yet it's been doesn't doesn't matter man (laughs) so yeah um just like to say thank you very much hope to hear you more hope to hear everyone will be back for us throughout the year I'm more than like, and to be honest with you, I could say so much, but I'm not going to, but just know that you are always in our hearts and we always hope that we do you justice, that you keep coming back to us. So as for that, um, I am on Twitter under Final Cut Talk and Instagram on Final Cut Official. Obviously, I do body slams and drop kicks on Twitter and Insta, but I leave the uh, Facebook one to fleas out. Speaking of our lovely co-host, where is he? You can find me on Twitter at Five Star Wildcard. You can find me on Instagram at Beautiful Michael. And you can find me on TikTok at Beautiful Michael. You can find me on Facebook at the Gokai Studios page. You can find me on the other Facebook page at Body Slams and Dropkicks. Fraser, do you look at do you say that every night in the mirror before you go to bed? No, I kind of just swing it. That's fair enough. Then. So unfortunately, the first one of the year has actually come with a startling renovation. Renovation, uh, renovation. Sorry, Michael Fraser does not love Kenny Omega as much as we thought he did. Oh, so oh. it is. It is in that honor that we will forego the usual Shawn Michaels song, and we will dictate this one to Kenny Omega. So Fraser, thank you very much for making our our new year absolutely happy as Larry. And yeah. obviously to everyone listening, Happy New Year. And I hope you do everything you want to do in 2022. Any hopes, dreams, ambitions you have. But I'll tell you what, of the one bit of advice we will give you, start a podcast. We've been going, well, it'll be about 18 months now. And to be fair, we've only been getting bigger and bigger. So if there's something you enjoy, anything you're passionate about, turn it into a podcast and just make sure that you keep on at it. And you will succeed where where we know that a few of us have failed miserably. But either way, that's not about that anymore. So, Mr. Tasker, please sing us out with our with our actually our fond farewell to Fraser's love to Kenny Omega. Mm, lay a whisper on my pillow. Leave the winter. On the ground, he wakes up lonely. There's air of silence in the bedroom and all around. Touch him now. He closes his eyes and dreams away. It must have been love, but it's over now. It must have been good, but he lost it somehow. It must have been love, but it's over now. From the moment they touched till the time had ran out. Make believe and they're together that he's sheltered by his heart. But in and outside, he's turned to water like a teardrop in his palm and it's a hard winter's day yes winter's day 
Omega dreams away. It must have been love, but it's over now. It's all that he wanted. Now he's living without. It must have been love, but it's over now. It's where the water flows. It's where the wind blows. It's where the water flows. Goodbye, Kenny Omega's love for Fraser. And good riddance. Farewell.